All right, sometimes you just need to have your students do a little bit of practice. Now, how do you do that in this season of distance learning where your kids are at home and you're in your classroom all by yourself and you want to see their work? Well, doing something a little bit more sophisticated than, you know, like, you know, having the kids do their work on paper and then take a picture of it, although that is fine. Uh, we're going to use Desmos uh, as an alternative to that camera trick. It's going to be a way to use Desmos to have our students show their work. So uh, I'm logged into teachers, uh, teacher.desmos.com. I'm going to click on custom. I'm going to click on new activity and let's call this a whiteboard template because that's basically what I'm doing here. I'm creating uh, a template. So here's the classic activity builder. And right now I've got one slide and nothing in it. So really all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin by dragging in a sketch. And now when I hit preview, here's what the students will see. One big old huge canvas for them to show their work. Done. Technically I am done. Can you believe it? Uh, all I have to do now is way in the upper right hand corner, click publish. And here it is. Now what the students are going to see is that. They're going to just see a big old huge canvas. What you would have to do is you're probably you're going to have to tell the students, hey, on your canvas, I want you to solve such and such problem. All right. So that's one level. We could go a little bit deeper. So what we could do is uh, I'm going to go in, in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to click on those three dots and I'm going to edit my activity. We could do one step deeper. I can drag a note. Now I'm not going to put the note side by side with the, with the sketch. Instead, I'm going to arrange it so that it's on top. And I'm going to do that on purpose because it actually, uh, for some reason, Desmos, when you do it in this arrangement, you get a larger canvas than if they are side by side. All right, now I'm going to try and maximize how much canvas or how much workspace my kids get. So I'm going to put it on top of the sketch. Now here, is where I would put the problem. All right, so, oh, as an example, let's say, let's say solve. And let's just do here, and I'm gonna do three and two thirds, oops, whoa, there we go, plus uh, five and uh, four fifths. All right, there you go. And so there's my problem. So when I, I'm gonna hit preview, and this is what they're going to get. They're going to get the problem up there. I'm going to be able to do their math down here. And I'm going to get all that classic Desmos interface as a teacher. I'm going to have the dashboard. I'm going to be able to pace kids. Why would I pace kids if I only have one slide? Because I'm not only going to have one slide. Check this out. I'm going to get out of here. And now that I've got it, I'm just going to... Uh, I can't, when I right click on it, I don't get an option, right? So I'm gonna click on it, I'm gonna do edit, copy, and then I'm just gonna do edit, paste. Whoa, bam! So now I have two slides. Now at this point, they have the exact same problem. So maybe I'll change this. I'll change this to uh, two and one uh, third plus three and, uh, I don't know, two, uh, uh, fifths. No, that's already fifths. Two sevenths. Good. There we go. So now I click on it and on slide two, that's my problem. And on slide one, I've got a different problem. So now I'm able to uh, create quickly um, a couple of problems, practice problems for the students to work on. Plus I get the added benefit as the teacher of having that dashboard. Now there's yet one more idea that we can do. So I'm gonna just add a new slide. I'm gonna drag it to the third one. And so now I have that third slide. I'm gonna bring in a sketch, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do this time, now I can change the background. So now if I drag in a, a, a clip art of a problem that I've already found, uh, it's a screenshot. Now when I hit preview, Boom, the entire problem uh, canvas is filled up with the problem and it's really there's no really good place for the students to show their work. So here's what you're going to do. To fix that, I'm going to go to slides.new and I'm just going to quickly create, I'm going to drag that image, that clip 
screenshot of a problem onto a slide. And then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to do file download uh, as a ping right there. File don download as a ping. Now it's going to show up on number 0000. It's going to show up over here on my desk desktop. And there it is. I no longer need the Google Slides because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change that background in Desmos. I'm going to drag in rather than the original screenshot, I'm going to drag in the problem that I had um, you know, put in the Google Slides. And now, whoa, bam, look at this. I got the problem on the left. I got plenty of space for the students to do their writing. So we've got three options now for how to uh, provide, use Desmos to provide students opportunity to practice. One, you just kind of create a slide and you give them a sketch and that's all there is to it. And you say, all right, everybody on your, on slide, in this case, slide four, solve such and such problem. So that's one way. Another way is you can, um, above that sketch, you can use the note and you can insert a problem yourself. Remember, you're going to put it on top, not to the side, because you're going to maximize your canvas space. If we do it on the side, it's going to look like this and you get a small canvas. But if you do it on top, uh, here's the problem and here's the canvas and you get a bigger canvas. That's your second option. Your third option is you can import an image from Google Slides, which somehow kind of reformats everything so it's nice and pretty. And that, whoa, let's go, there we go. And that is how you can use Desmos to create opportunities for your students to practice.